the station of unlimited possibilities presents creating your seat at the table with your host ashley little as she welcomes her guest to the table welcome to creating your seat at the table i am your host ashley little a little bit about myself corporate professional by day entrepreneur by night four-time best-selling author CEO and founder of Ashley Little Enterprises, LLC, owner and creator of Creative Broadcasting, and co-founder and owner of Talk Radio and TV Network, LLP. Tonight, we have an amazing special VIP guest by the name of Dr. Keishma George. A little bit about her. Dr. Keishma George, in a single phrase, be described as a purpose pusher. She is an inspirational speaker, entrepreneur, mentor, playwright, TV host, radio personality, producer and author and her overarching mission is to inspire people to fulfill their god-given purpose dr keishma's work as a speaker and mentor is executed through the women destined for greatness mentoring program in kent county delaware she believes that despite life circumstances there's greatness inside of you dr keishma george is the president and ceo of keish home inc acronym for kingdom investments and single hearts keish home inc was founded out of a desire to impact positively on the lives of girls and women in the state of Delaware. Dr. Keishman George is the president and CEO of Kingdom Investments and Single Hearts Home, Inc. Keish Home, Inc. was founded out of the desire to make its impact in the lives of girls and women in Delaware, as well as those young women who are presently in or have aged out of the foster care system. Dr. George worked as an independent living mentor, witnessed the tremendous challenges of aged out foster care youth experienced while trying to find their way to a self-sufficient and stable life. A passion within her grew for these young adults and their future as she experienced their frustration in handling basic skills such as opening a checking and savings account, preparing, parenting, and the frustration of single parenthood. Dr. George knew that these young adults, whether they were single parent or single, needed a strong support system that would empower and encourage them to take control of their lives. They struggled in the transition of leaving foster care because many were still attending high school and were not emotionally or financially stable. After witnessing this, Dr. George began her journey of seeking ways to assist young adults in becoming emotionally and economically self-sufficient so that their transition out of the foster care system and into independent living was successful. Many of the young adults with whom she worked with left the foster care system at 18 years old and found themselves homeless, pregnant, lacking self-esteem, incarcerated, unemployed, and without guidance. As a mentor, Dr. George became frustrated by the minimum amount of resources the community offered these young adults. Dr. Keishman's dream came to pass, and she opened a 24-hour transitional home for young women presently in or have aged out of the foster care system in Delaware. She wants to make a difference in their lives and make certain that they have a safe, successful transition to adulthood and independent living. Her diligence and passion for young women have been recognized in various newspapers, paper articles, including the Dover Post, Delaware News, Journal Delaware State News, and Milford Beacon. She was also featured in the Wisdom for Everyday Life Kingdom Voices magazine, Gospel for You magazine, Keish magazine, Bond Inc., and Blogspot Week Spotlight, fostered out of love in addition to appearing as a special guest on the Atlanta Live TV show. WBOC ABC, Live Talk Radio Show with Coach TMB, Live TV Show, Straight Talk for Women Only, 101.7 FM Radio, Fox Fire Radio Show, and the Frank and Travis Radio Show on Praise 105.1. Empowered Women Ministry have recognized Dr. Keishman as Woman of the Year in the category of Entrepreneurial Success, as well as Beta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. Welcome, welcome to the table, the amazing Dr. Keith Majority. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm excited to be on tonight. Thank you so much, Ashley. How are you? I am excited to have you at the table, okay, because I know you are about to share your wisdom and knowledge with my listeners, okay? Everybody has heard your bio. You are amazing. So tell us. More about your entrepreneurial journey, Dr. Keishma, because it's amazing. Well, 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 you want me to really talk about that entrepreneurship background journey? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I just want to share just a few little um, of my journey. My journey did not start off with um, 
a bag of chips and a dip and candy and cream and everything nice. You know, my journey started off with God truly, truly taking me through a process. I remember um, not knowing who I was, and God had to take me through some steps to for me to be able to find my identity and really know who I am in his kingdom. And the way that he did it was uh, I remember several years ago I had a psychology degree, and I worked at a fast food restaurant, and people would come in who graduated with me and laugh at me and look down on me and say, you know, Kishon would never really be nothing. She just wasted her time. And she has a degree, and she's still mopping the floors and cleaning the toilets. And I remember going home, being on welfare and food stamps, and always just asking God, like, why am I going through this? I'm trying to get a corporate position, job, and all the doors are just being shut in my face. But God showed me in the midst of all of that, that no matter where you are in life, it does not determine who you are in your destiny. So that's a little bit of my journey um, at the beginning. It wasn't a really pretty picture, but at the end of the day, I am who I am because God showed me the way through the process. And, you know, I just want to commend you for all of the different, you know, platforms that you have created and the movements you have created to reach back and pull forward and help our younger generation and our adults, you know. So I just want to thank you because I know our audience is getting ready to really hear some powerful things that you are continuing to do, you know. So thank you, Dr. Keisha, for all that you're doing. Thank you. So your mission is to inspire people to fulfill their God-given purpose. So tell us more about that because you are the perfect pusher. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, forgive me that nickname, my um, best friend, Tori James. She's my best friend. She, been, um, she was able to recognize, and, you know, every time someone would get into my presence, she was like, do you realize that you're pushing them? Like, if you end the, if you're actually in my presence, and you don't do certain things, I'm able to be able to identify God. I always say God give me eagle eyes that I'm able to see where you're about to go. And in life, um, you know, you need that midwife, you need that Mordecai who who is able to push you into who you really are without being jealous, without being intimidated by your gifts and your talents. But you need that person to be able to say that you can do it. You know, I remember growing up in my life, the one who was really that midwife in my life growing up was my mother because my father died when I was um, at a young age. And my mother raised up, and she became that role model that, you know, even though I struggled in school, my brother, I have a brother, he always did really well and excellent in school, but I was the one that always struggled in, in, in school. But my mom always said, Kishma, you're a leader. You can do it. I believe in you. I never heard my mom say anything negative to me. Mm-hmm. And she was the one to always speak life into me. And because she spoke life into me, it, it, it encouraged me that I can do anything I put my mind to do. And and that's what I always encourage anyone who comes in my presence, that no matter what your circumstances may be, no matter even if you're on welfare and you're on food stamps and you, you're living paycheck by paycheck, you can become who God created you to become for such a time as this. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love that. And thank you. I just want to commend your mother for stepping in and pushing you out there, Dr. Keith, because look at the empire yes. that you built. Okay? <laughs> I know because the funny thing is, actually, you know, like when I would go into the prayer room, and the thing is that, you know, sometimes God would give you a dream, right, Ashley? And sometimes uh-huh. a lot of people question it. Well, did I really hear God? You know, and then they release it to people who don't believe what they heard, and then they drop the dream. Mm-hmm. So when mm-hmm. I go into my prayer room and God would give me a dream, the first person I would go to is my mom. I'm like, oh, my God, this is what I see. This is what God told me. She was like, you can do it, and I run with it. I love it. I love it. And that's why it's so important, right? And I know you talk about this all the time, but, you know, you see a push regardless, and you be careful who you share your dreams yeah. with, right? Yeah. Because some people yeah. are dream killers. <laughs> so Come on we have now. to be careful with that. Mm-hmm. Yes, because mm-hmm. that happened to me too because I remember when I finally found out, you know, mm-hmm. who I was and walking into that purpose and walking into that um, place that God had for me, I remember picking up the phone and I was so excited because my life mm-hmm. was beginning to unfold in front of mm-hmm. my eyes, right, Ashley? And 
Mm-hmm. The thing is, I picked up the phone and I called these ladies that I thought was my friend at the time. And I, God had told me at that time to open up a transitional home for young women aging out of foster care. And I told mm-hmm. one of the ladies, and she was like, girl, please, you know you can't do that. You don't have no money. You didn't go to school for business. You just came off of welfare. And guess what I did? I dropped the dream. See? I dropped See? it. And that's why we have to be very careful who we share our dreams with for our listeners that are listening. That's the truth. Right? It's, it's, I'm glad you didn't <laughs> listen to her, Dr. Keisha, because if you would have listened, you would have Well, I did. I did. I did listen to her. I, I dropped it, but, I, I mean, God put fire back on me for me to pick it back up. It was a, it, I, it was a while it got dropped. I listened to her because, you know, the, the closest people to you is the ones who have the great influence in your life. So you got to be true. careful who you surround yourself with because if they have great influence in your life, they can be telling you stuff that's not really good for your destiny and you're going to stay where you are and never arrive and become who God created you to become. That, that is so true. But the good, even though you dropped dream like you said, Dr. Keith, but, you, but God pushed you back to get it. Because some people, when you have those dream killers, they just think uh-huh. that, right? Right, so it's good that you had that relationship. That's so important. Your yes. relationship with God. <laughs> yes. Yes. And God, yes. don't play with me, Ashley. I feel like God always on me. I'm telling you, like, I, he don't give me no time to be playing no games, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember, mm-hmm. um, you know, pursuing my dreams and going forward with, um, with my dreams. And I remember leaving one of the banks because, you know, many people were saying this, this is what you should do and this is what you shouldn't do and this is where you'll get the money to open up the transitional home. And I want to say this to someone tonight, um, Ashley. I want to say that there's many people right now listening and God has given you a vision this is not the time for you to listen to the instructions of men, but listen to the instructions of God. Yes, God will send people to give you great counsel, mm-hmm. but you always get your wisdom from God. And what I did was I went to people first, and then I came mm-hmm. second to God. And that's where the doors were being shut in my face as I was pursuing my dream. Mm-mm-mm. Thank you for sharing that powerful, that powerful words. I know some listeners are being blessed tonight because Dr. Kishma is definitely annoying it. So, Dr. Kishma, what are some strategies you would give to listeners who are running from their purpose? The strategies mm-hmm. that I would give to someone, um, you said pursuing their purpose? Who are running, who's running from it. Because, you know, some people know what their purpose is, but they're, they don't want to submit to it, you know. For that person that knows, you know, what they're called to do, but uh-huh. right, they don't, they don't, they don't want to do it, you know, because they don't think there's time or <laughs> I you know, know they're discouraged. I, I, was, <laughs> I was one of them. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be transparent tonight. But everybody listening, kiss my yes, yes, yes. It's me. It's me. At the beginning, um, I was one of those people. I um, I was running from it. Um, but at the end of the day, the strategies I was um, release tonight is number one, listen to the voice of God. Number mm-hmm. two, when God tells you to do anything, do it. And number three, stay in prayer constantly because when you stay in prayer and you stay in the word of God, God will begin to download the wisdom, the knowledge, the strategies that you need to be able to get that confidence that you can actually pursue your dreams instead of running from your dreams. When I got closer to God, even though I was running away from him, God began to um, show me that you have to pray. And the more I pray, the more that I um, listen Mm -hmm. to the voice of God and the more that I stay in relationship with him, then I began to stop running and I answer the call. I want to share this story quickly because many people don't know this. I remember when I was, God had called me many years ago, Ashley, and I mm. remember when the Lord had called me, I told him, I said, give me until I'm 50 years old, and then I'll come to you. The Lord began to speak to me. He said, Kishma, I have a calling on your life. I said, well, God, just give me just 50 years old. I promise you, I'm going to come to you. What happened was one day I was at the wrong place at the wrong time. I went to a club. I was not supposed to be there. A gunman came in with a machine gun looking to kill a man that night. 
Guess mm. who the man, the, the the guy who was running from the gunman, ran behind a, my, myself and two other young ladies for cover. We was running to the right, running to the left. He was holding us, and he was, I guess he was saying to himself, if, if he shoot that machine gun, everyone is going to get killed. I'm not going to get killed tonight. Mm. You will be a shield. And I remember I was so frightened because I know at that time in my life that I did not answer the call, and I was praying. I was like, God, if you give me one more chance, I promise mm-hmm. you I will answer the call. And the, the guy with the machine gun um, pulled up, put the gun down and said, I'm told the guy, he said, I'm going to catch you another day, and God spared my life. So I want to relieve this to someone tonight. When God is calling you to go forward with the assignment and the calling of your life, you never know how much time that you have. You need to answer the call. Answer the call tonight. Write the book tonight. Write the vision down tonight. I'm sorry. Write the vision down. Open up that business. Open up that nonprofit. Begin to write out the dream. Don't have any more excuses for why you can't do it. This is the time and season that God is calling you for. If you're listening on tonight, it's not coincidence. God has a specific assignment that only you can do to change the world, to change the city that you're in, and to change the community that you live in. Mm-mm-mm. Powerful. Receive that. Wow. I told I, listeners, Dr. Keisha, I told you you were in for a treat tonight. And Dr. Keisha, to talk about, you know, just your testimony that you just shared, you know, this just shows how God has a way of getting our attention, right? To make sure yes. that we're going to listen and walk into what He wants us to do and not our time, but what uh-huh. He wants us to do. I love that. So, what are some strategies you would give to listeners? who think, you know, it's too late to get started because you do have some people that think it's too late. They think the time is up, and it's not Uh because it's never too late Uh to get started. So what do you have for that person that's listening? Well, the person right now who's listening and thinks that it's too late that God cannot use it because of your age, that's not true. There are many people right now, even if you look on social media, um, the the older lady who was in um, that movie, Panther, Black Panther, Remember, she got her big break, and she's like 90-something years old, Mm -hmm. 40-something years old. I mean, no matter where age you are, no matter what age you are right now, God still have a purpose and a plan for your life. I mean, even though you might not be a a visionary to open up a business, if you're a grandma, God have a purpose for you to be able to speak wisdom into your grandchildren because they might be the next generation to be the next great leaders. You know, everything that... You're, that you have right now um, in your life that has been, um, that God has given you insight to go forward and to produce. God is saying to you right now, if you're listening, go forward and run with the vision. Run with whatever he has shown you. Um, there are many people right now listening, and they're looking at the age, well, I'm only 60 years old. I already passed my age group. You know, my health is not really good. But nothing is wrong with your hands. You can begin to write the vision, and someone can go ahead and execute the vision. This is a time for no more excuses, and this is a time to just do what God has called you to do. So for our listeners that think it's too late, it's not. As Dr. Keeson just said, it's never too late. Go ahead and do what God has called you to do and do and walk in your purpose. So, Dr. Keeson, you are the president and CEO of Keish Home, Inc. So tell us more about your amazing company and how we can support and, and donate. Um, Keish Home, Inc. is a nonprofit organization that mm-hmm. um, houses young women who have aged out of the foster care system here in Delaware or single women who are homeless ages 18 to 22. And um, we help the young ladies to be able to transition from um, homelessness into finding their own identity, helping them build their self-esteem, helping them with independent living um, skills, and helping them to transition into the dreamer that they are and to make an impact in, throughout the community here in Delaware and out throughout the world. So there are many people that reach out to us that want to donate. Um, you want to become a mentor or a volunteer or host a workshop or donate food or whatever it is that you feel in your heart to do. You can visit us at www.kishhomeinc.org um, or visit our website and see all the different workshops that we host um, throughout the year. 
So definitely support and follow her, uh, Dr. Keisha's nonprofit. She's doing some great things. And I know, Dr. Keisha, your, your platform is very big on mentoring, right? And that's why you executed the Women's Destined for Greatness mentoring program. So you tell us more about your mentoring program and what you're doing with the young girls. Yes, the mentoring program is called Women Desperate for Greatness, and in this, like I always teach the young ladies, actually, you never know who you are, you know. Um, the, it, the, the service was birthed out because my mom, um, growing up, I used to really walk with my head down. Um, many people don't know that I was very shy, um, never was an outspoken or anything like that, but my mom was my mentor, hold your head up, walk up straight, you can do it. And that's what we're doing here at the Women Destined for Greatness, helping the ladies to be poised, posturous, because you never know where you're going to go in your life, in your destiny, teaching them etiquette skills, leadership skills, entrepreneurship, health and wellness, self-esteem, um, so many different other workshops that we um, help them with for them to bloom into those great women of leadership that they are. Um, so we're excited about that. And thank you, thank you for creating that space because, you know, I, we, we, our kids need mentoring now more than ever, right? And yes. so I, I, I just want to thank you for doing it because you're the prime example of why it's so important for young women to have good mentors. So could you speak more on that? Because it, it, it's so important that we uh, make sure our kids have the right mentors and that we're mentors to them. And if they don't have that, that they, mm-hmm. they seek one. Mm-hmm. What I realized, too, with the mentorship part of it is that I always tell um, the staff um, there at our transitional home and for the mentorship program, you never know who you like you're going to change by the wisdom that comes out your mouth, by the words that you come, that comes out your mouth. Words are very, very powerful. Mm-hmm. You have to know how to be able to speak to someone, no matter what the situation may be, even if they're coming, you know, um, to the organization and they're hurt or they come from a very bad background, you have that power to change and help them to look at life in another aspect. And that's what we do. Um, That's why I think mentorship is very, very important. I think mentorship is being a midwife to many, many people to help them become, to help them to become the person that God has created them to become for such a time as this and to help them birth out their greatness. I remember having a young lady um, there at the shelter, not realizing that she was gifted in, in, in being a motivational speaker. And every day I would see her, I, w- I would tell her what I see, what I, you know, what God was showing me who she is going to become, you know, one day. And um, mm-hmm. she began to say, you know, Miss Kishma, I'm going to become a motivational speaker. And she began to pursue her dreams, and now she's speaking. So mentorship is very important. See, you pushed it out of her, right? We all need that person that you know that that come in and intercede yes. and help us push it out of her. So you, that's why that's why you call the perfect pusher. See. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, you you talk, you know, you cater to more the single parent mom and the uh-huh. single woman, right? So yes. what is some? Because I know we probably have some listeners on that are single parent moms or are single women. So what is some uh-huh. some advice you would give to those women? who are having trouble transitioning because of their past. You mean single women in general? Yeah, single women and and single parent and single parent, um, single parent moms as well, single moms. So you said transitioning from, I didn't get that, sorry, Ashley. So, so basically what are they, what are some advice you would give them for, for, you know, that for that single woman that it's hard for her to transition from her past, basically. Uh So what is some Uh advice you would give to that woman? Well, basically, um, I'm a single woman, and from my experience, what advice I would give to anyone right now who is single, um, leaving from your past and going into your future, is staying really close to God. Um, My self-esteem wasn't the best at the beginning, but as I stay closer to God and build more relationships, he began to give me more insight. He began to help me with my confidence, um, the way how I used to even dress. If some of you used to see me back in the day, you'd be like, that is not Kisma. I mean, girl, if I bent over just to pick up a piece of candy off the floor, <laughs> you would see everything. I mean, 
God, like, took my dress in from, like, I mean, my stuff used to be, like, unbelievable, you know. So he will groom you and he will help you and then he will, he will heal your heart, meaning that the, the things that, that you have to overcome, the things that you overcome, he will use that um, and, and help you and show you that the things that you have to endure is part of your destiny. So that will help you get towards um, pushing forward and pursuing your dreams and becoming that great woman, that great leader, that great voice that God has called you to be for his kingdom in this season of your life. So for our single women, embrace this season. Thank you, Dr. Keith, for sharing your uh, story because, I mean, you have some people that, you know, they might not uh-huh. be happy in this season, but we should be embracing it, right? We should be embracing every season and, and know that, you know, whatever, whenever it's our time, you'll present that person to us. <laughs> yes. Are you talking about being single, like, without, um, like, a single? I, I think a, you mean, like, being single waiting for your spouse, too? Is that what you're talking yes, about? Yes, yes. I'm, yes, <laughs> single women in general, yes. <laughs> Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Okay, I got it now. This is what I was saying. <laughs> I just said, I thought you said something else. Yes, what I would say for all the single ladies out there, um, even though you've been through some things, stay focused, um, continue to push forward with your dreams, stay focused in the assignment that God has given you, and when you stay focused in the assignment that God has given you, then I believe that God would say you will be at the right place at the right time, and God will connect you to that person that you know you heart desire. But you have to be, you have to go forward with your vision. You can't be distracted. You know, you can't be all over the place. Your mind can't be on a man. Your mind has to be on God's business, and He knows how to get whatever it is that He needs to get to you on the right time. Timing is everything. I don't want to talk mm-hmm. about that because that's a long thing. But timing is everything, right, Ashley? It is. <laughs> it is. Timing is everything. So thank you for sharing that, Dr. Keithra. So, you're you know, you, you're doing big in the media as well. So you do a, you wear a lot of different hats. So I know uh, there's some listeners on here that are trying to grow themselves in the media. So what is some advice that you would give to listeners who are trying to grow their brands in the media? That's a really good question because you know what? I never, I mean, the things that I'm doing, I mean, it's too, I'm going to try and wrap it up in a little, little, um, in the short period of time. Your brand is who you are in God. Mm-hmm. Just be yourself. Flow the way God tells you to flow. Whatever he tells you to do, just do it. Don't try to build a platform. Just Flow to which whatever which way God gives you to flow. That's what I will say. Don't look at anyone and try to be that person. You could be inspired by someone, but find yourself, your identity. Be comfortable in who you are. That's your brand. Oh my God, that's your brand mm-hmm. all by itself. Mm-hmm. And what mm-hmm. I realized with God is this. When you become comfortable in who you are, that's when he's going to push you out to the forefront. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because you're ready. Mm-hmm. So be yourself. Mm-hmm. Enjoy where you are. Enjoy the level that you are. Whatever dreams, visions, ministry, whatever it is that God has you in right now, enjoy that moment. And God will get you where you need to be in whatever place that he has shown you. So just enjoy it. You are your brand. So for some ladies, mm-hmm. I want to get this out there. If you go on a, in social media and you're coming on and you go on a Facebook Live, please don't put no scarf on your head and be talking and inspiring us because we're not listening. You are your brand. Oops. Make sure your <laughs> hair is calm. Make sure your face is right. You know you are your brand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't come on there with, you know, your clothes not iron and then your halfway button and all that crazy stuff. And for men as well, you are your brand. So your brand represents God, God's kingdom. So you want to do anything in excellent. This is another thing I want to throw there. If God gives you a vision, just don't put any flyer out there. Let it show excellence. Let it show 
represent that you took your time and you thought it out. Just don't put something out there because you can or you're trying to prove something to someone. Do everything in excellence. Whatever you put out on social media, do it in excellence and let it represent God's kingdom. I love it. That was the word by itself for our listeners. Do it in excellence because you are your brand. And thank you for touching on that, Dr. Keisha, because that is so important, right? Because, you know, your first impression is, is always the last impression. <laughs> so exactly. we have to be mindful of that. Yes. Yes. Powerful, powerful. So you have created multiple tables. You built, you're continuing to build empires. But I always ask my guests this question. How did you create mm-hmm. your seat at the table? This is, I only have one answer. I just answered the call and obeyed God. And God just opened the doors for me um, based on, you know, my my answer to him, um, answering the assignment on my life. That's my answer tonight for that question. <laughs> I love that um, answer because <laughs> uh, that's all I know. God did it because Kishma uh-huh. is not the smartest thing, but God is the one. I answered the call, and He was the one to make that happen for me. I love it. I love it. And we all have a journey, and you know, a lot of people don't want to embrace the pain and go through the pain, mm-hmm. but we have to learn to that it's part of the journey in order to get to the next level. So, what did mm-hmm. failure teach you on your journey? So that one more time, Ashley, sorry. What, what did failure teach you on your journey? Failure, oh, my goodness. That's a good question. What did failure teach me on the journey? To um, never give up, no matter mm. how much I want to stop. There are, there are so many people connected to my destiny. Um and I have to go forward no matter what the circumstances may be. Failure taught me that. I remember several years ago the first um, project that I had. And um, in my mind, I thought thousands of people were going to show up. And I think I had probably 100 people or less than that. I can't remember. And that day, I was so embarrassed. I said, God, I would never put on another event. I had rented out a big arena, a big uh, a big center that could hold probably like 500 people. And um, probably like 50 people show up to 100. And I said, God, I would never do this again. And God told me when I went home that I was not a failure. I was successful because I answered and obeyed the assignment. So failure taught me that whenever God gives you an assignment, finish it all the way. Finish the assignment. You can't stop in the middle or complete it to the end. Finish the assignment. You cannot stop in the middle but complete it to the end. Powerful. Yes. So what did success teach you? Because you're very successful. Say that again, please, Ashley. What did success teach you? Success teach me to stay focused, stay humble, and keep God first in everything I do. Mm -hmm. Love that. So, so Dr. Kichma, you know, you shared yeah. some amazing nuggets with my audience tonight, and it, was, it has been a very powerful interview. But I know you're going to finish, you know, this year off strong, and we're walking into quarter four. So what can mm-hmm. we expect from you the rest of 2019? <laughs> <laughs> you said, what do you expect? Yeah, what, what can we expect from you the rest of 2019? Wow, that's a really good question. Um, 2019, um, I have a, I have um, different things that I'm working on right now, and um, you know different events that I have coming up. And for 2019 closing out, you always want to close up with a bang and close out really hard. 
So just stay focused in the assignment. Um, continue to push harder um, and to be able to get ready for 2020 with the bigger assignments and bigger projects to come. Amazing. So I can't wait to see how, yeah, now that you're going to finish it strong, I just can't wait to see the great things that you're getting ready to continue to birth for the rest of this year. So I look forward to continuing to uh, watch as you consistently, consistently blesses us all on a daily basis. So I want to thank you for coming to the table, you know, taking the time out of your very, very busy schedule to come to the table, and I can't wait to invite you back. Thank you so much, Ashley, for having me. I had a great time tonight. (laughs) (laughs) I did as well. So tell us how we can follow you. Tell the listeners one more time how they can follow you on all social media platforms and connect with you. All right. So everybody, if you would like to connect with me, connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Periscope. Connect with me on my website at www.kishmageorge.com. You can visit the nonprofit organization at www.kishhomeinc.org. Or if you want to hit up the Kish Magazine, you can visit www.kish-magazine.com. If you have a story, if you want to be featured, check us out, hit us up. We would love to hear from you. Yes, so please, please connect with Dr. Keisha. She is definitely somebody to know and somebody to connect with. Again, thank you so much, Dr. Keisha, for coming and sharing all of that wisdom and this powerful interview that you did with us tonight. And I can't wait, like I stated, to have you back. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank Thank you, everybody, for listening. I love everybody. Thank you so much for all the people who shared it. Thank you. Thank you. And I would like to give a special thanks to Tammy Collins Marquis and John Schamberger, as well as author Kimberly Mathlemore. And I would also like to give a special thanks to my intern, Sarah, from Tennessee State University, and my intern, Vontaria, from Winston-Salem State University. You all may follow me on Facebook at Ashley Little and on Instagram at underscore Ashley A. Little. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Creating Your Seat at the Table, where Ashley speaks with corporate professionals, celebrities, entrepreneurs, authors, and speakers who are transitioning or have transitioned to entrepreneurship. 